Today, let's delve deeper into the scoop we've got about Jason and Lucia, straight from the game's artwork and that initial trailer drop. Seems like Rockstar's shining the spotlight a tad more on Lucia this time around. Not to downplay Jason's role, but Lucia's getting some special attention, you know? Alright, so the trailer kicks off with Lucia finding herself in what appears to be a detention center, or maybe some kind of confinement. She's sporting the classic inmate gear and hanging out with a few others. Now, it's a bit fuzzy whether it's an old girls club or a mixed bag. But here's the twist. It doesn't look like your hardcore, maximum security joint. More like a temporary pit stop. Then we see this scene with Stephanie, a counselor at the place. Stephanie's having a chat with Lucia, trying to untangle her situation. Stephanie asks why Lucia's landed there, and Lucia nonchalantly responds with something like, bad luck, I guess. It's got me thinking, maybe Lucia's in for something minor. You know, the wrong place, wrong time scenario, or maybe a string of small time scrapes. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. So, Lucia's starting off in a bit of a pickle, but I'm itching to see how the story unfolds, how she got caught up in this mess in the first place. Rockstar's got us all on the edge of our seats with this setup, and I can't wait to see what twists and turns are in store for these characters. Taking a closer peek at Lucia in this clip, she doesn't strike me as too old or hardcore, you know? Surprisingly, she's not all cuffed up or tightly restrained while having a chat with Stephanie, the counselor at this place. Stephanie's vibe doesn't scream in danger while talking to Lucia, so maybe her time in jail isn't as intense as we might think. So, Lucia's got a date with jail at some point. But yeah, she's not going to be stuck in there forever, that's for sure. Let's shift gears to this artwork Rockstar's thrown at us. In that pic, Lucia's flaunting an ankle monitor. Now that's the kind of thing they slap on you when you're out but not really free. It's like they're keeping tabs on you, making sure you stick to a certain area, like your home turf or maybe a specific part of town, as set by the powers that be. Now let's dive into some wild speculation on how this whole ankle monitor deal might mix things up in the gameplay. Imagine Imagine navigating the game with that kind of electronic ball and chain. It's gotta influence how Lucia moves around or what she can get into. Maybe it restricts her to certain zones or forces her to lay low in certain situations. The possibilities are buzzing around my head. It's like a marker that says she's out of the big house but under some major watch. You see, when you've got one of those strapped on, it's like a 24-7 reminder that you're under strict scrutiny. It's like a digital leash telling you, hey, no funny business or else. Now think about how this could shake up the game's map dynamics. Rockstar might play a throwback card to the old GTA vibes, where you're restricted to certain parts of the map at the start. As you progress through the story, you gradually unlock more turf to roam. Picture Lucia, stuck in a zone until she can shake off that monitor, whether she manages to ditch it by some gutsy escape or someone legally gives her the green light. Fast forward a bit and we spot Jason and Lucia in a pretty dicey scene. Jason's in the driver's seat, Lucia's riding shotgun, and they're peeling away from what looks like a scene post crime. A couple of cop cars are hot on their tail, lights flashing and sirens blaring. Jason's got his hands tight on the wheel, sneakily glancing at the cops as they whiz past. Then, when they're out of sight, he shoots Lucia a glance that screams serious concern. It's crystal clear these two are linked somehow, tied together by that ankle monitor and whatever legal trouble they're entangled in. How's that for a curveball in the storyline? There's this air of suspense and questions lingering. What did they do? And how does it all connect back to Lucia's time in the slammer? The plot thickens and I'm itching to see where this tangled web leads us. Let's zoom in on Lucia for a moment. You know, it's not giving off that classic jailbreak vibe. When you make a daring escape from the big house, you don't come out with an ankle monitor like you've been given a hall pass. Nah, it's more like you become public enemy number one, constantly dodging the long arm of the law. It's got echoes of that on the run feel from Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're always watching your back. Wonder if Rockstar's planning to revisit that kind of storyline here? But here's a thought that's been gnawing at me. What if Jason's got this noble quest to keep Lucia out of hot water. Could be, but there's this lingering sense that they've got some pressing reasons behind these actions. It's like they're in this situation either by design or due to some pressing needs. Speaking of which, let's take a peek at the next scene in the sequence. You've got Lucia holding a bundle of cash that could make anyone's eyes widen, stacks of 20s and crisp hundreds. And what's she doing? Nonchalantly turning away from law enforcement? It's like we're getting a glimpse into the aftermath of a successful heist. And then there's this sight, both of them, dressed up with bandanas and masks, keeping their identities under wraps as they bolt out of what seems to be a rundown corner store situated in the middle of nowhere. There's this air of confidence about them, but choosing a low-profile place like this hints at something. They're not doing this for kicks. No, it's like they're in dire need of funds. Now let's talk about Jason's wheels. It's not some flashy top-of-the-line ride like you'd expect from Michael DeSanta's swanky tailgater in GTA V. Nope, Jason's driving an older model, something more modest. It gives off this vibe that they might not be swimming in cash. 
The whole picture seems to paint a story of urgency. Lucia's holding a stash of cash, they're hitting a low-key spot, and Jason's not cruising around in luxury. It's like they're pushed into a corner, perhaps strapped for cash, and pushed into some tough choices. There's definitely more to this tale than meets the eye. Let's dive into Jason and Lucia's ride. They're cruising around, making these slick turns and slides. It doesn't seem like they're trying to dodge cops. You can even hear Lucia kind of squeal. She's gripping the car's side in a way that screams, thrill ride. Looks like they've got a pretty upbeat and tight relationship. They're heading towards a motel. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, they're more than just partners in crime. Yup, Jason and Lucia are romantically involved. Now, Rockstar's not laying it all out for us, but you can pretty much read between the lines. Now, let's dissect this trust business. Feels like Rockstar's planting seeds for the storyline's ending. Trust can either be kept intact or shattered, right? It's like a pivotal point in a tale of two partners in crime. Maybe they'll face a dilemma where they have to choose between both making it out alive or going for a massive score, but someone doesn't make it to the finish line. Trust seems to be the crux of it all. And here's the kicker, the final scene. They kick open the door of this corner store, all confident, guns out, ready to hit the jackpot. The story concludes on that note. Now, let's switch lanes and talk about the trailer's song choice, Tom Petty's Love Is A Long Road. Interestingly, there's a tweet from Tom Petty's account expressing gratitude for having their song featured in GTA 6's first trailer. The song itself talks about the struggles of maintaining a relationship, how it's not a smooth ride, but worth the effort. So GTA 6 might just be more than a crime tale. It's shaping up to be a love and trust story. I think Rockstar's aiming for their twist on a Bonnie and Clyde vibe with Jason and Lucia. That's pretty much all the scoop we got about them in the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. They didn't spill much, but we kinda got a glimpse into their journey, the hurdles they face, and this theme of trust that seems to run deep in their story. There's this one scene where it looks like they're gaining some traction in their journey. Jason's driving, Lucia's standing up in the passenger seat, and some paparazzi or somebody's snapping their pics. Seems like they've leveled up from their clothes to the car they're driving. So, at some point in the story, they might hit some highs. But knowing how these stories go, it could all come crashing down by the end. So, that's pretty much the lowdown on Jason and Lucia, our main characters in GTA 6. Can't wait to dig into their stories more. What do you folks reckon the GTA 6 plot's gonna be like? Which character are you stoked to play? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you like this video, a thumbs up would be cool. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and want to stay updated on all things GTA 6. Don't forget to ring that notification bell too. The release of the GTA 6 trailer in 2023 has sent shockwaves of excitement across the gaming community. The anticipation and buzz surrounding this highly anticipated title have reached an all-time high. Fans worldwide are feverishly dissecting every frame, theorizing about the game's setting, characters, and innovative features. Alright, so in the GTA 6 trailer, there's this moment where this girl in a white bikini gets everyone talking, debating whether she's Lucia or not. She's chilling near this pool, taking in the Vice City skyline, and then she turns around. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack there. Her hair moves all natural-like, swinging around as she turns. She's got these big hoop earrings, cool purple sunglasses, rocking a purple lipstick, and check out those nails, French tips. Oh, and there's this bracelet on her left wrist that catches the eye too. Now, here's the deal. Some folks are saying, nah, Ah, there is absolutely no way that is Lucia, or it just doesn't cross anyone's mind. Their argument? She looks different from how Lucia appeared in other shots, especially in that jumpsuit and during the whole crime spree with Jason. But hold up, there's a good chance that in GTA Online, customization's gonna be off the charts. Need a different haircut? No biggie, just swing by the in-game salon. Problem solved, so who knows? This bikini girl might just be a customized version of Lucia with a whole new look and vibe. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. You know, I'm pretty confident that it won't cause much trouble. Just like in GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2, it feels like they'll let us switch up our characters' hairstyles again, which is pretty cool. Now, about this scene, it looks like it's happening at a totally different stage of the game. At the start, Lucia's all locked up in jail, doing those petty crimes and all. But in this snippet, she's looking like she's hit the jackpot. Loads of success and riches. There's more to this in the trailer, giving us a peek into what a thriving Lucia might look like. She's sporting a different hairstyle, dressed to the nines, hanging out in a fancy car with Jason behind the wheel. And to top it off, the girl's getting her photos taken by the paparazzi. Some folks out there are betting that this bikini girl is gonna be the face of Rockstar's marketing strategy. You know, just like how they've always had that iconic female figure in their marketing since the good old days of GTA 3. So, putting it all together, it really seems like this bikini girl is Lucia. From the style to the little details like the various hairstyles, everything seems to point in that direction. It's exciting to get these glimpses of what Lucia's different phases might look like in the game. Rockstar's been doing this thing with the promo girls for ages, from the early days of GTA 3 to the more recent GTA 5. You might remember them. 
The girl in the bikini holding the martini glass, or the San Andreas girl leaning over at the Vinewood sign with those shades. They've always had these distinctive figures for their marketing. A bunch of people are pointing fingers at this bikini girl, saying she's the new rock star promo face. But I've got my money on Lucia. Take a look at those birthmarks and accessories, those little marks on her face and arm. They're pretty similar to what the bikini girls got. Sure, some aren't super clear, but makeup or sun exposure could easily cover them up. And those earrings and bracelets? They match up pretty well with all the girls who look like Lucia. Even if some shots might leave room for doubt? Like the one where she's driving that fancy car. I'm pretty convinced it's Lucia. Jason's checking her out. The accessories are a close match, and her facial structure lines up. Not to mention, her body shape, facial features, skin tone, hair length, and color, pretty much all of it lines up perfectly. In that scene, the way the bikini girl moves seems a bit forced, like she's intentionally flipping her hair or something. So maybe it's part of a mission, Lucia trying to blend in at some event to gather info, or pull off a heist. Or perhaps it's one of those moments where she's at the top of her game, all success and loaded. Oh, and that bikini she's wearing? It's from the Santino brand, which first showed up in GTA 5. So, in GTA Online, we've got this whole range of clothing options, right? There are jackets, shoes, and some of them even parody luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, which is a real high-end clothing and accessories label. Now, some people are throwing around this theory that the bikini girl might be a returning character from the old GTA Vice City like Mercedes Cortez. But honestly, that's way off. Vice City was set in the 80s, and GTA 6 is gonna be in the present. Like, probably around 2023. So the timelines just don't add up. Even though this bikini girl looks a bit different and acts a bit like an influencer, I'm pretty convinced she's Lucia. She's got those same body features and face structure as Lucia. And Lucia's a game changer as the first leading lady in modern Rockstar games. Before her, female characters mostly played supporting roles or were just NPCs in GTA games, never the main focus. Rockstar tends to put a lot of effort into their main characters. The little differences like the sunglasses or lipstick don't bother me much. We know there'll be in game stuff you can buy, like accessories. And hey, being able to change hairstyles was a big deal in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. So I'm pretty confident that the girl in that white bikini on that Vice City rooftop is Lucia. But yeah, I get it, there's gonna be a lot of chatter and debate. Remember the crazy theories from past GTA trailers? Like people saying the homeless guy was Nico Bellic? Or that Michael was an older Tommy Versetti? It's always possible I might be wrong. But to me, it all seems to point to Lucia here. We're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. 
Take this image for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect, parallax maps and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain surface. In reality, the surface is warped but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create craters on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, 
Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large-scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. GTA 6 gears up for the last leg of development, with Rockstar calling back its staff to the office full-time. This intels straight from Bloomberg journalist Jason Schreier, fresh in his latest Bloomberg piece. Today, we're diving deep into what Schreier shared. Known as a trusted voice in the gaming sphere, let's unpack his insights. Let's not waste time any longer and dive right into Jason Schreier's article. Grand Theft Automaker Rockstar Games asks workers to return to office five days a week. Rockstar Games, a division of Take-Two Interactive Software, will ask employees to return to the office five days a week beginning in April, as the video game maker enters the final stages of development on its next game, the hotly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. In an email to staff on Wednesday, reviewed by Bloomberg, Rockstar head of publishing Jen Kolber said the decision was made for productivity and security reasons. The company has faced several security breaches, including a massive dump of early footage from the new Grand Theft Auto and an early trailer that leaked in December. Kolber wrote that the company also found tangible benefits from in-person work. Making these changes now puts us in the best position to deliver the next Grand Theft Auto at the level of quality and polish we know it requires, along with a publishing roadmap that matches the scale and ambition of the game," she wrote. Return to office mandates have been a hot topic across various industries since the pandemic forced myriad employees to work from home. More recently, many employers have asked staff to return to the office for two or three days a week. A study last month found that remote work did not have an impact on productivity. The issue has been particularly controversial among video game workers thanks to the volatility of the industry and its lack of a centralized workforce. Many of 2023's biggest video game hits, such as Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games, were developed remotely. Rockstar's in the final stretch of developing Grand Theft Auto 6, hinting at a possible early 2025 launch. With this, we might anticipate the release of a second trailer, along with screenshots and more teasers in the coming months. While fans rejoice, this could mean extra pressure for Rockstar Games staff. Stay tuned here for updates as Rockstar unveils more details about GTA 6. Are you geared up for the official start of GTA 6 marketing? Drop your thoughts below 